everyone. Welcome to Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Julio Hernandez, and I'm the executive chef at Nectar Urban Cantina. Uh, we did a cuisine back in March 1st, uh, 2020, and we had this one dish I want to recreate for you guys. It was uh, something very close to me. We call them piggy beans. Um, when we first jumped onto Kushan, there was a lot of thought process going, and I wanted to do something that really showcased who I am, and my people, my country, Mexico. And so what better than beans, right? So we'll take it from here. Here we have some uh, Mexican chorizo we made earlier in the week. Uh, this guy, we used uh, ground pork. We used uh, some of the shoulder and the butt. Um, it is chorizo. I personally like using wet wine vinegar, which gives me a lot of acidity at the end of my dish without having to add it. So this is our first piggy. It's also pretty spicy. Um, Second piggy, this guy I did not make myself. This is uh, Gifford's Bacon here from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, good friends of ours, lots of smoke, lots of smoke poison here, delicious stuff. That's your second piggy. Our third piggy is this beautiful uh, pork stock, which actually came from my boys at Black Dynasty Ramen here in Nashville. Uh, as you can tell, that's quality stock, but that's our third piggy. Uh, moving forward, we have a four element that we're gonna be making later in the video. This is our uh, ground pork. Uh, we're gonna turn into green chorizo. And then lastly, but not least, we have this awesome pork rinds from a Stockton farm. It's a Berkshire skin. Okay, so we're gonna start cooking. Uh, pretty simple. This is a one pot type of dish. So we're gonna start cooking the chorizo. So about uh, medium heat on this. Let it, let it go. Just a little bit of oil when you do chorizo. You want a tad of oil. Because you're going to render some fat, but you need oil. You don't want it to get stuck to the pot. On your chorizo, you don't really need to go crispy. Uh, crispy chorizo is really good, but that's not what we're shooting for. We're just kind of cooking these, letting some fat out, and then uh, just put it to the side. We'll pull it back into the dish later on. Now that we got our chorizo out and waiting for us, it's time for uh, piggy number two. We got a Gifford's bacon. Add some smoke to the dish. So again, we're not looking for crispy. We're just looking to bring those flavors out and render down some fat. So now that we got our uh, second piggy nice and rendered down, we're starting to develop a couple layers. If you are here, you will be able to smell the smoke. You're in your kitchen, you're at home. It's okay to do this. Put in the same place, save yourself a little work. Just uh, mix these two together, because later we're gonna fall them in again. And then make sure to save some of that fat in there because we're about to start cooking some veggies. So next step, we, we talk about veggies. So we're gonna go ahead and start folding our mirepoix. For those who don't know what mirepoix is, it's the beginning of everything good. So you got onion, celery, carrots. We're gonna start with onions. We really want to develop a nice caramelized onion in there. So let that guy go by itself for a good 10 minutes or so. At this stage, you're looking pretty good. That's a nice onion. You can tell it has some of the flavor of the bacon, the chorizo. So feel free to add your remaining of the mirepoix. And keep an eye out, a little oil. So here we go. We got our mirepoix, nice caramelized. Look at that, guys. Next, we're gonna go with garlic. Uh, it's never enough. Next, we have some uh, roasted poblano peppers. Uh, no seeds. Next, we have again, you got some charred tomatoes. Uh, building more layers, it will bring a little bit of acidity to the dish and start putting some juice in there. All right, so once you start looking like this, you already know it's gonna be a beautiful thing. You got your tomatoes, you got your mirepoix, and then here comes the important part, seasoning. Um, don't be afraid of salt. Step one. Then we have uh, Mexican oregano. It makes a difference. Definitely look for the Mexican oregano. Next we have a little bit of cumin. A little bit of cumin goes a long way. Not too much. You don't want it to taste just like cumin. This guy likes to uh, take over. Um, we have another one. We have a chile morita. So chile morita will add 
a little bit of fruitiness, a little, tiny bit of smoke as well. Um, it's a little spicy, more than a jalapeno. Next, we have a uh, chili powder. So this maybe starts making sense. Chili powder reminds me a lot of chili. So you start adding familiar flavors, something everybody's familiar to. And with that being said, I got two more chilies that are very familiar to me. We have a chile piquin, which is a very spicy, similar to a cayenne pepper of Mexico. So be careful with this guy. Just a tad. He, he brings a lot to the party. And then we got some uh, hatch chilies, some of my favorite chilies. Put as much as you like. Uh, and we added all these peppers, but it's not a spicy dish. We're not going for spicy. We're just going for layers. We're back again on this, and you see all your vegetables starting to stew together. All the flavors are making sense. Now it's time to add your pork stock. This guy's gonna bring a ton of flavor. Again, this dish is called piggy beans for a reason. You bring as many pigs element as I have to think of that are friendly to the party. So today we're using uh, kidney beans. Traditionally, I like using pinto beans. Today we're gonna go with kidney. So I part cooked these kidney beans to al dente, if that's a thing, that's what I call it. And all you gotta do is fold in your al dente, part cook kidney beans, there's no shame using can, it also works. And then on this one, you also got kidney beans, but I saved some of the bean stock. You know bean stock as well. So next, remember these guys, we got these two guys coming back into the party. He already looks pretty good. Look at that. So you're adding back all this flavor onto the dish. And this can be a crock pot dish. It release the dish, let it roll, go to work, come back, get you some good stuff. Now that we have our uh, piggy beans simmer in, the next step is making some green chorizo. So we got some ground pork right here. Some of the ingredients, uh, I put it to the side. So we got avocado leaves. Uh, this reminds me of a good barbacoa. So I got some peas for this recipe. A little bit of cumin. Can't do nothing without garlic. I have some uh, charred. Uh, jalapenos, charred serranos, charred poblanos, I have a uh, epazote, which is Mexican herb, and then we have the holy hoja santa. We got a nice big hoja santa. It's a gift. This guy has a little licorice background smell to it. Really beautiful stuff. Um, just to make this a little faster, and then you add toasted pepita seeds, a little sunflower flavor. Um, once you grind all this, once you puree all this. Alright, so we have here our nice uh, green seasoning for our green chorizo, which we're about to start making. Let me put on some gloves and let's dive in. Alright, so you got all those nice flavors in here. You got a little serrano, you got spice, you got the garlic, you got the hoja santa. Just put enough, enough what you think. You don't want to put too much, but now just go ahead, dive in. Alright, so, so for the next step, we have uh, put our green chorizo inside a stuffer, and it's pretty simple, man. It's just one of those things you could probably feel you're doing it wrong, but just go with it. Uh, you go slow, it's best, and then just keep kind of helping it. It's one of those things you feel it, and you got your green chorizo coming in. You want to make sure you don't get any air pockets, so kind of holding it tight. I let go a little bit. So back here we go. We got we let this guy simmer down for a while. Look at that. Look at that nice thickness. We achieved that thickness with the bean puree. Uh, you see the garlic. You see the bacon. You see the chorizo. You always got a taste. Um, I've said all I want is a good taco. Cool. So we got this nice uh, fresh tortilla. We have uh, maíz de la vida. Um, made these tortillas for us. So this is freshly milled corn from Oaxaca. And once you try one of these real tortillas, you won't want to try the other stuff. Uh, so here we go. Just a little bit of oil. When you do your tortillas, you want to go taquero style. Add a little bit of oil. Um, get it nice and crisp, nice and soft again. And this guy's ready. Put a little bit of this guy. We got our piggy bean taco. Uh, we didn't forget about our last friend. This guy's from uh, the Stockton Farms here in Tennessee. 
And he does some amazing things. So it's a but you can do whatever you like, man. You can do some nice queso fresco. Then we got the epazote there. We're just gonna finish it with a little ramp and epazote oil. Get that spring flavor out of there. Easy taco. You gotta, you gotta go for it. Mmm.